Doing these escapes, this is about, is this uh, January, February 1945, March? Yeah. Yeah. In the dead of winter. In the dead of winter. How yeah. cold is it? It's just zero weather all the time. The, same night. the whole time? Yeah. And inside that barracks, same thing? Same thing, except you bundle up and do the sleep together if you had to. Mm -hmm. Try to stay warm. Do you care to talk about, did you lose some guys that were in the prison camp with you? Yeah. Yeah. Quite a few. Quite a few. Well, the reason being, they didn't get up and try to help themselves. Like Jock told me. Yeah. You gotta walk. You gotta walk. You gotta walk. I went from, I weighed about 180 pounds. Yes, sir. When I got there. When I was released, I weighed about 100. When I got out. I got back to the American lines. I weighed about 100 pounds. 100 through 3. You described earlier your basic training and uh, the, the work that they put you through. That helped us. Yeah. It helped me. You felt that that really survive. Yeah, it helped you survive. Yeah. Describe that. How did it help you survive? Toughness. You just learned to be tough. Yeah. You know, and you were in good shape. Yeah. You know, but you could tell who was in good shape and who wasn't. They were falling out and something happened to them. And if you're in good shape, you kept on going. Mr. Grantham, if I could just take a step back for one second, back to St. Vith and the battles, if you want to describe this to me, what, what was the first feeling like for you to have to fire your weapon in, in battle? I shoot a man. I shoot a person. If you care to discuss that. You had no trouble. No trouble. You had, you, had, you, had, you had no choice to do it. You had to do it. They were coming after you. See, the difference to me, and I'll tell everybody this, I always do, mm -hmm. This uh, the war we got over in Iraq. Yes, sir. See, like World War Two, that war, you either sh kill or be killed. You didn't have no choice in the matter. And you, but you knew who you were shooting. In Iraq, you don't know who you're shooting. Yeah. Let me shoot your brother. Yeah. You know? So that bothers me a little bit, but what can you do? It's okay. You know, it's over with us. Yeah. Because during World War Two, you either shoot and kill or be killed. Yeah. It's the same thing in Iraq, but you don't know who she's killing you. Did you notice a vast difference, like you're training, you had live weapons training and exercise, and then boom, you're thrown right into battle. Was that, uh, when you're thrown into battle like that, was, did it? Did you feel like your training had prepared you enough to understand how to... I don't, I don't think you ever get prepared enough. Okay. You know, I really don't think you ever get prepared enough to be, do the best you can, I guess, with the time you have. Of course, I guess, when we were trained, they were going to hurry to get us overseas. Yeah. Because they knew what was coming. Yeah. You know? They'd already landed on D-Day, and they were needing the help. Now you're, uh, thank you. You know, you're back in back in the camp, and you would escape multiple times, and most of it is to go out and get food and well, to get. I would say food. multiple, but I, I, at least four or five times. That's impressive enough yeah. to me. And it sounds like you all had a good system down to do that. Oh well, yeah, we had we we planned it all. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had a we had some. Lieutenants and captains in there with us, you know. And we all sat around at night and planned how we were going to get out. We knew the Russians were digging a tunnel out. We had a lot of Russians in there. And they were, they were, they dig, were trying to dig their way they out. Were separate. Mm -hmm. They were a separate part of the camp. But they did dig their way out. All the way out. How did they find it, you know? They were just digging, digging tunnels underneath as best as they could, yeah, huh? Yeah, but you could tell that what they were doing because you walked by their camp and they had a fence. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and uh, they were on one side, we were on this side in the compound. But you see the old German people, I mean the old Russian people, they all carried knapsacks. Did they? All of them. Uh-huh. Yeah, one of them. And you see them out there scattering dirt. Yeah. So you know where that's coming from. Yeah. The tunnel. Yeah. And they scattered the dirt during the day outside in the yard, see? Are you aware of any tunnel escapes that the jerk that the Russians made? Yeah, Were you? We figured what was going on. Yeah. And Jock and I were walking around. We'd see everything. And you know, Jock used to say, he said, they're digging out. I don't know how long it's going to take them, but he said, they're working on it. You know, they had about, a, say, as far as some, oh, two, three hundred yards. They could have dig out. But you got to dig it deep enough where I won't cave in. You know? Right. Yeah, the other bad thing I saw in camp one of the worst things I've seen in camp was a Russian soldier mm -hmm. get killed over one potato. Oh, jeez. 
they bring in a load of potatoes out of the field. And they make soup for all these people. Take a wagon load of potatoes, probably feed two or three thousand people. But this Russian guy, he ran up and grabbed one off the wagon. And the guard shot him and killed him. I'm looking at him and he had it happen. So you see all these things, you know, and say, well, your turn just wasn't there yet. Yeah. That's where the mouse The the uh so what what else is happening day in and day out? You're continuing to walk around the camp to keep oh, yeah. keep oh, yeah. warm? Yeah. Well, you Chuck said you gotta walk. So I went with him every day. I in fact I stayed in touch with him after I come home. Good. He died right after he didn't last he didn't live very long. He was an older man. So you walked every day and you felt that that really helped save you? Oh yeah. And you're surviving in sense. Besides being in pretty good shape. Yeah. When it all happened, plus his walking helped me. You had nothing more than the clothes on your back. That's right. I didn't have that when I ended. I was in civilian clothes. Civilian clothes? Yeah. How'd you get them? Somebody, I don't know, some of the guards would they bring clothes in. I don't know what to what get off of dead people, I guess. Jeez. You know, ones they poison in the gas chamber. How did you? How did you lose your uniform? How did that come off you? Well, you hang around a thing gets so dirty, and you can't wash them. There's nothing to wash with. Yeah. So what you do, you just kind of hope he gets clothes. They come around with a shirt or a pair of pants. I had a pair of pants on, blown to somebody. Yeah. And all that's all you had. What time of year is it now? Uh, in 1945, it's the oh, winter it's, time. January, February. It's, uh, April, I guess. Now it's April. You know when President Roosevelt died? Yes. We were still in the prison camp then. You had, is that how you learned of it? How did you learn of it? Well, we had a radio in camp. Yeah. See, it was, if a pilot was shot down, supposed to bring something with it. And that was all the parts of a radio. We, we get BBC every night. Really? Yeah. They come around late at night and sneak in and tell you the news. So we knew when President died. So that, now it's about April 12th, 1945, yeah. Yeah. right? That's when he died. Yeah. So uh, you're aware of that, and you're still in the camp. Oh, yeah. Still Roosevelt died. Camp, yeah. Now, and this camp is how, about how far from Berlin? Oh, God. I have no idea. You don't know? You're getting closer. You're in the heart of Germany, Stalag yeah, right. 4B. Right. Did you, did you ever experience any bombing or any, anything uh, like that? Anything come your way? Did the U.S. bomb your area? I can tell you something you won't believe. Mm -hmm. I walked through the middle of Berlin. We were being bombed 24 hours a day. The guards were with us, but they run, they run. You know the guards. Mm -hmm. They'd leave you. But this Eighth Air Force didn't know I was down there. But they'd bomb in Berlin 24 hours a day and never let up. Well, before we get to Berlin, how we do you get in there? How did you get out of that prison camp? What happened? And then this was before I got to the prison camp. Oh, oh, this is before you got to the prison yeah. camp. This is on the train? No, I was walking. You were walking? Yeah, yeah. And you're in Berlin? In Berlin, yeah. And the 8th Air Force is bombing Berlin? 24, around the clock. And we were down there. Was what did this, had this come at a point where they got you off a train and they were, were, were transferring yeah, you? Yeah, the train had blown up, uh, wrecked, you know, a car jumped the track or something. Okay. So, they walking. We were in Berlin. And they're bombing it. And we were running, we were high. Well, I was running with the, with the guards. I figured I'd stay with him. He knows where he's going. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't no dummy, you know. I said, hell, let me stay with him. Yeah. So that's the way we all work. Well, you where did you go? Did you go hide underneath? Yeah, the get in the building, in the basement or something, you know, until the plates quit, get a break, and then we get out and start walking. During that time when the planes were bombing Berlin, where did you uh, where did you eventually wind up? How did you guys how did you survive that? Did you get onto another train at some yeah, place? Yeah, that's, that's where we got to 4B. Yeah, that's where we ended up getting to 4B. Tell me, okay, so you've got uh, you've got uh, you, you you went through that and you survived a bombing in Berlin and then you wound up inside Stalag 4B, right? Right. All right, and then you you survived there and you essentially survived just on eating snow. Mostly. Mostly on snow. Snow. Snow and very little else. Well, because I was just we were scared to eat the thing. Yeah. Uh, and they didn't give you anything, right? Bread. You could get a loaf of bread between 20 people occasionally. You know, that was good. That black bread. Yeah. You might find a couple of bullets in it, but take the bullets out and go ahead and eat it. <laughs>
Um, how how did you uh, how did you get out of the prison camp? Oh, the Russian liberators. What, when did that happen? How soon after oh, Roosevelt God. died did you I remember that happen? I don't remember. I'm just sitting there thinking. I just don't remember. Okay, so we're now we're about April of 1945. About April and May. It had to be in April. Okay. The end of April. It had to be. The Russians. We knew where the Russians were. How did you I know where the Russians I have were? A radio. Radio. Get, BB, get the BBC news every night. Okay. We could hear them coming, coming, bombing, you know, shooting. And they they come in and kill every guard there at night. The the Russians did. Oh yeah. They killed all the yeah, guards. Every one of them. All these guards that were were watching you, the home guard type yeah, guys. Kill them all. The Russians came in. Mm -hmm. Killed every one. They didn't one a lot. Yeah, okay. They killed all them. Yeah. Now, how did you? I, these are obvious questions. How did you know that? How did you describe that to me? What was it like? Right. How were you aware that the Russians were coming into the camp to kill the guards? Be, well, we know what they were going to do when they got there, but we knew they were close. <laughs> you knew what they were going to do when they got there? Yeah, we figured we knew. Yeah. And they did. Okay. They didn't, they didn't let nobody go slip by. They killed them all. Really? I stood at the door and watched them. Yeah? Yeah, I was clapping. You were clapping? <laughs> Not for the old men, no. They kind of help us. But for the young Gestapo. Yeah. They were different. Yeah. The, can you describe what the Gestapo type guys did? Did, did, did they did they abuse any of the prisoners while they were in camp? The Gestapo guys? Yeah, shoot you. But I, the the biggest thing I had, I, you know, I, I don't know how you can talk about it. Yes, sir. But you get to the point. Some people say you can't reach the point of no return. Okay. You can. Okay. I've done it. Okay. So uh, that's a. Uh, Hard thing to say, but I've seen the times that I didn't want to live. Yes, know. sir. It happened so fast and so quick. We got strafed, and uh, we got strafed by a British plane again. He's on the road walking. This is this is coming at the end of the war. Or? No, this is between. We in the middle there somewhere. Middle of there somewhere. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, I got I got in a ditch. I, I jumped in a ditch. I'm just trying to remember now just how it all happened. And this Gestapo, young Gestapo, he, well, I didn't see him coming. He walked up behind me and he said, Rouse, Rouse, you know, get up. So I, on the set on the side of the bitch, I, I looked up at him. I said, why don't you go ahead and shoot me, you know? And in plain English, he said, no, I'm not going to shoot you. He could speak better English than I could. Really? So I said, well, give me the damn gun. I said, I'll shoot you. This went on for about five minutes, and I, this is between two enemies now. And finally, he walked off and left me. Can when you, you imagine? I can, well, I can. Can you, you just come as a Gestapo? Was he in uniform? Yeah. 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 We were deep in the German, I see. And uh, he's hollering around, and I was cussing and caring over it. Uh, so I say, you tell people you can't do that. You can. You can reach the point of no return. Does he, did he want you to stand up so you would be shot by the plane itself? Probably. Yeah. No, he probably wanted to do it, I guess, but he lost his nerve and I challenged him. Well, I challenged him, let him give me the rifle. You know. I guess they feel better. I got a crazy man here. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah. He was kind of crazy. Yeah. I beg somebody to shoot you. When you, uh, when, the, when the Russians came in, so they came in, they killed all the guards. Yeah. They, and what happened next? They kept us there. Oh, for four or five days. They didn't have anything to eat either. Yeah, I was going to ask you, did they have anything yeah. to eat? No. So they took us all and marched it down to this military camp about 10 miles away. Okay. And uh, they tried to feed us something there. But all they had was sheep and mutton stew. <sighs> Some kind of stew they mixed up. And uh, hey, you eat it, though, because you're hungry. Before before the Russians pulled you out of the camp, what happened when the Russians came in after they killed the guards? I mean, was there general? I mean, you guys were all... No, the, the captains and lieutenants of our, our yes, sir. They took over. They took the over camp, yeah. Yeah. And they had the sergeants and the lieutenants keeping everybody in line in contact. Okay. And he had a loudspeaker. He would put out the own loudspeaker. Stay in. If you go outside, you'll get killed, probably. Okay. Yeah. So we did. We stayed in. The marchers down to this camp. Okay. Military camp, and they fed us when we got there. Who's that? It that sheep? It wasn't much. Wasn't much. 
but it would be better than nothing if it was hot. That's the main thing. So I went out. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay. I got down there and all of a sudden this uh, American Jeep came by rolling up. Uh huh. Well, I couldn't figure out where this came from. And some major was on that. He was about half drunk. A major was. Now, it's, we don't know where we're at, really. He said, I got a, he had a Jeep and a driver and his uh, trailer. Uh huh. He said, I got a trailer full of cigarettes here. He said, I'm not going to give them to you now because I want you to, during the night and tomorrow, bribe these guards to let you out with these cigarettes. And I have trucks on the road to pick you up. But we know where the hell he come from, you know. So come to find out he was from the 104th Division and they were about 50 miles away. And he came all the way in there with a Jeep to give us these cigarettes to bribe the guards with, which they did. But in the meantime, at night, I was still hungry. Mm -hmm. So the Russian went out on a raiding party. They go out looking for booze, you know, vodka. Uh huh. So I asked one of them, he speaking a little English, could I go with him? He said, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I could go. So I went right to the gate with them. Nobody said nothing. With, you know. with the rush? Yeah, with the rush. Uh huh. You know. So we went right in the houses. I felt sorry for the women and children because the Russians are pretty rough, mm -hmm. you know. So anyway, I found a can of sardines canned sardines or some kind of sardines, and I ate them. That was my downfall. Oh. I thought I was going to die that night. Yeah, you felt, you felt, uh... No, I got told me I'm poison over that night. Oh, no. And then next morning when these guys were getting ready to leave, I can't bend over, I can't straighten up. I said, you're not going to leave me here. So I got out and started walking with them, all bent over like this. So the Major, sure enough, he had trucks out on the road the next morning picking us up. And it was about 50 miles back to the American lines at Elb River. That's where he was coming from. Yeah, it must have been. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we got to uh, the camp. Of course, they take us down to d just to take all our clothes away from us, give us all new clothes. And they carried us to the mess hall. Okay. They went down they had uh, mashed potatoes. I forget what that mashed potatoes, a little small slice of pie, something else, and not much. Were you able to eat at that point? Well, that's what I'm going to tell you. So they give us what they recommended that we could eat. But I took two bites and I couldn't eat no more. Yeah, it's sick. Your stomach's no shrunk, see? Yeah. I'm going to put this on hold for just a second. You still had me. You were describing that uh, the, uh, the the U.S. came and they trucked, they trucked, oh, yeah, they truckers. liberated you. You want to hold to, that microphone up? Back to Elbe River. Back to the Elbe, and they brought you, they de loused you. Division, yeah. De loused you and a. Clean clothes. Uh, clean clothes. Carried to the mess hall. And then they talked to you about the food you could eat. What? Yeah, they said you could have what's on the plate, but no seconds. Okay. You could have milk, uh, coffee, whatever, but yeah. no more food. So I took uh, two bites. That's all I could eat. So what I did, I had a pork chop on my plate that, that was included. I wrapped that sucker up and put it in my pants. Okay. I ate it that night. <laughs> I was so hungry later on. Did your stomach handle it better then? A little bit of the time, yeah. 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 How long were you at that camp where the 104th was on the Elk? They got us out right away. Yeah? And they got us on a plane and flew us into, into a Camp Lucky Strike, they call it. Where was that? It's around La Havre. No hard. Yeah. Tell me about where did they fly you out of? You were in the middle of Germany, right? Yeah, they flew us out of there too. They flew you out of Germany? Up to Lucky Strike, yeah. So they got you out of this camp on the Elbe River. They tr trucked you to an, air, an airfield? Yeah. They put you on what kind of a plane? The C-47s. The C-47? A little rackety thing. A little rackety thing? Yeah, but they got us out. They got you out. And yeah. then where did they, they flew you near, near La Havre? supposed to be the best plane we had for transportation uh -huh. during the war. C-47. 990, the C-47. And then you wound up um, yeah, well, back in La Havre. And then he landed in, uh, they landed in uh, Paris. Okay. They refueled, I guess, or something. 
So the Red Cross met us. That's the only time I've seen the Red Cross. Okay. And they fed us coffee or donuts, you know, and whatever you want to eat. So I said, I better not eat nothing. You know, I don't trust myself yet. We go back on the plane, and then the C-47 had benches along each wall. Okay. With five-gallon cans, and everybody got sick, you know. Everybody got sick. And that can, they're running back and forth, but they're throwing up. Because of the flight? Oh, no, and that donuts and... Oh, they didn't like the food was bad. You no, couldn't it wasn't handle bad. It just was... You, you couldn't handle it? No, you couldn't handle it. Was it because of the flight and the food? Or well, just... the two, yeah. Yeah. The food and it also was yeah. bouncing around. So I, I sat in the window and just kind of eyed one of the motors. I got through it. I didn't throw up. I was proud of myself. I didn't throw up. You, got, you, you were okay on that. Yeah, and you, right. got, you got to La Harve? I got to La Harve. They, they kept us there by... Oh, they, what, they, they, they did a lot of... Get us back together, I guess you call it. Uh-huh. And uh, I guess it was about a week. But they, their kitchen was open 24 hours a day. Did you have medical attention at that oh, point? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had medical attention back at 104th, got us to the help, if you were real bad. Were you taking any medicine? No. No medicine? No. They just wanted to, wanted to start to get you food again? Oh, yeah. Yeah? You come, you come back in a hurry. You need to come back quick. Come back quick? You do. You'd be surprised. So you're there at Lahar for a week. Then where do they transfer you to? No, they transfer to a, got us on a board trucks and carried us down to the water and put us on a boat. On a boat. Headed for home. Where did the boat go? Where, what boat was it? Were you on? Do you remember? It's a, yeah, it was just a little uh, cargo ship, little uh, LST they call them. Okay. Yeah, one of them. Not a LST. What the hell do you call them? Well, they, they would transport, you know what I mean. Yep, on a cargo ship there. Cargo yep. ship, yeah. Okay. Run by the, uh, not the Navy had a, had a Navy gun crew, mm -hmm. but the uh, Merchant Marine run the ship. Mm -hmm. And the uh, first thing I did when I got aboard the ship, I volunteered to cook. <laughs> I said, how about get in that kitchen? So I did. They let me cook, work, work with the other guys, you know. And I said, I enjoyed myself the whole trip. It took us 14 days. Where did you go from La Harve to, uh, to New York? To New York, on this cargo ship, huh? It took us 14 days. How many guys were on this cargo ship? 300. Remember? 300? And the thing, we hit a north storm in the North Atlantic. Yeah. And the runner would come out. I thought the thing would come apart. Yeah. I put my life jacket on La Harve. Yeah. I didn't take it off till I got to New York. Jeez. Because I was scared of it. I think the thing was going to sink. The, this is uh, operated by our guys, though. It's our ship. It's a U.S. Merchant ship. Marine, Merchant, Merchant Marine, Marine yeah. ship. And uh, they practice shooting every morning, and we enjoy watching that. But the boat would go down, hit the water, and go completely out of sight. Yeah. And then come back up. Jeez. And I'm standing up there looking at the thing, you know, my life thing. I said, well, I'm, I ain't taking it off. And he had bet some other captain he'd beat him in New York. But he went to North Atlantic with a mistake. Hit the storm. It took us 14 days. It took us four to get over there. 14, 14 to, to get back. back. Now, when you came back, the uh, the uh, were, you, were you the only ship out there? Were, you, were there other ones coming back? There are other ones, yeah. They're all coming back at the same time. Well, you see a spot them here and there. Yeah, hold you the mic down a little bit. Where did you where did you uh, you would spot them a little bit? But then you got through a storm and and uh, you got through the storm. Got to New York. Got to New York. Yeah. What happened when you got to New York? They took us off and loaded us down to, uh, not Miles Tannish. Mm -hmm. I guess we, we came, this is this now, this is about two or three weeks' time, I guess, all total. We cut us down to Fort Meade, I think. Yeah. Fort Meade? Yeah. You were at, uh, this is about May of 1945 now? May, would you say? Is it still? Uh, I was discharged, uh, no. I stayed in the Army. They got me back down here, and I was at, uh, what's the camp out here in Virginia? Fort Belvoir. Okay. I stayed at Fort Belvoir. I didn't get out of Army until September. Out till September? Yeah. September, uh, I don't remember the date. So you went to New York, to to Fort Meade, and and at the at this point, are you still rehabilitating? Are you, yeah. You're, you're, they what? sent us to... 
I went down the road here, after I tell you what, we got to Fort Bean, and we had a, a 30 day furlough, I believe it was. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. And they shipped us to uh, Miami. Okay. Sam Ritz Hotel. We stayed out there for almost a month, the wife and I. Rehabilitation, they call it. For rehabilitation yeah. to the same. That was very nice. Yeah, and they brought us back to Fort Belvoir. And that's where I was discharged from. You were discharged from Fort Belvoir. And how did you get to Miami? Did you fly? They trained. They trained you to Miami, oh, yeah, trained. and they trained you back up to Fort Belvoir? Mm -hmm. And you were with uh, you were with your wife, wife at the time. Down. That must have been nice to yeah. to have seen her again after all that. Yeah. To have come back. It was. And how old are you at this time? Twenty twenty one. Twenty one. You're a young guy. Yeah. Twenty one years old. And so in Miami, and then back to Fort Belvoir. And at that whole point, it's still a rehabilitation time period, right? Well, <clears throat> yeah, but I had a I had a lot of trouble with them because they didn't want to turn, cut me loose. Okay. Cause I had. I had frostbitten feet during the war. Okay. I still had a lot of trouble with my feet. Okay. And they wanted to keep me in the hospital. And I raised so much hell, they discharged me. That's a mistake I made. Big mistake. I said, I never left. Why? Because I think I'd have got better, been better taken care of. Yeah. By staying with them, with the doctor. So I finally got discharged. It was in September. This I don't remember the date. So you're discharged September. I don't know that. I don't remember the date. September 1945. Yeah. 1945. Uh, uh, frostbite. Now. So after your discharge, where did you uh, where did you settle down at, Mr. Grantham? Indian Head, Maryland. Indian Head. Okay. And then. Uh, Indian Head, Maryland, and at that point you're married. Yeah, and then well, we had a kid already. I, I already yeah. a kid. Okay, so now you're now you're uh, you're. Uh, I went back to work in the uh, powder plant. In the power at Indian Head. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean. Yes, I know it. Yes. Yeah. And uh, then finally gave me the job back, but they were supposed to give our jobs back to us. Yes, sir. And we had a hell of a time getting them. Mm -hmm. So three months later, the order came down, reduction of force. So they kicked us all out. Okay. You know, all the veterans. So I went to work up at Santa Elizabeth Hospital. Which hospital? Santa Elizabeth. Santa Elizabeth Hospital, yes. Same side of it. Yeah. We fit in perfect. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> With me, it did. I stayed there for a while. Uh huh. And then, uh, where else did I go? Oh, a while. I left from there and went to D.C. jail. In D.C. jail? I stayed there 22 years. You're correct, you're corrections officer there. Yeah. You're, no, we just kept them locked up. Kept them locked up. Police locked them up. We kept them. You kept them. That was it. Okay, and so that was uh, that was your. Did you do anything with the GI Bill after the war? Did you Did you take? Yeah, I went to uh, a school, learned to lay tile and bricks. Did you? Yeah, bathroom tile. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Did you Did you do that at all in your career? Yeah, I did quite a few things. Bathroom, but it was, it was too much like work. Now yeah, that, that's a back-breaking job. Yeah, you got to be on your knees, flat, you know, all the time. But that was between after I got out of service. After I got out of service. Yeah. As as we wrap up, do you think that you learned lessons from the war that uh, your experiences that that shaped your life, um, uh, that helped you survive uh, the prison camp? That that shaped your attitudes after the war. Did it help you in any way to view view life differently? Well, I I don't know. I I just always thank God for living, survive what I did. Yeah. I, all my buddies are over there. Yeah. In the ground. Yes, sir. And I'm not. So that was all I could ask for. Right? Yeah. Excuse. Me. Thanks a lot, Mr. Grantham. You're uh, you're really terrific. Well, there's not a lot you know we can do about it. It's over now. Yeah. Sixty what? Sixty. Sixty one years ago, but. But you don't forget. Or sixty years ago, you never forget. Well, I'll get some pictures for you if I have to give them to these. Yeah. And then, then Katie can give them to you. Oh, that'll be great. Yeah, we'll okay. get them. I'll get them from Denise. That'll be good. Let yeah. me just. Pop that off. Thank you very much. This ends our interview with Mr. Grantham. I'll